Здравствуйте! Hello and welcome to Russian language class. Before moving on, let's have a quick recap of the topics that we learned in the previous lesson. If you remember correctly, in the previous lesson, we discussed about the comparative degree of adjectives and adverbs. And we have discussed that comparative degree of adjectives and adverbs are derived only from the qualitative adjectives or adverbs. We have also discussed in detail how do we form the comparative degree from an adjective or an adverb. So for the revision, I have written a couple of sentences and will discuss one by one. Этот дом красивее, чем тот дом. So how do we use the comparative degree of an adjective or an adverb? We can use it in two ways. The first is when we use the nominative case of the noun with which something is compared. Like here, along with the word чем. Чем is preceded by the nominative case of the noun with which something is compared and a comma is placed before чем. So, это дом красивее, чем тот дом. This house is more beautiful than that house. The same sentence can be written in a different way. Like here I have written, это дом красивее того дома. So, as you can see here, we have not used the word чем. We have used the genitive singular of the noun which we have used here in the nominative case. So, tavo doma is the genitive case form of tot dom. So, by using the genitive case of noun with which something is compared, we can also use the comparative degree of an adverb or an adjective. The other example I have written here, again with the genitive case of the noun, etat gorat starshe tavo gorada. This city is older than that city. So, here again I have used the genitive case of the noun with which this noun is being compared. So, this is about the use of the comparative degree. The other topic we had discussed in the previous lesson was the collective numerals. We have discussed that how do we define the collective numerals, what do they define, what do they denote and how do we use the collective numerals in a sentence. So, here I have written a sentence, an example. В парке играют трое мальчиков. So, here трое is the collective numeral which is derived from the cardinal number 3 and I have told you that with the collective numerals only masculine nouns can be used, masculine animate nouns that too in the form of genitive plural. So, here as you can see Malchik is being used in the genitive plural form Malchikov with the collective numeral Troy. We have discussed other collective numerals also. For example, Dwoe, Troy, Chetvira, Piachera, and others. And apart from the numbers, collective numerals derived from the cardinal numbers, we have also discussed the collective numeral Oba. Oba, which is used with masculine nouns, and Obe, which is used with feminine nouns. So, this is about the topics that we learned in the previous lesson. Let us move on to the topics that we will be learning in this lesson. In the previous lesson so far, we have discussed five cases in Russian. Nominative, genitive, prepositional, accusative, dative, and now we will be discussing the sixth and the final case which is called the instrumental case. So, today we will talk about its uses. So, how do we use the instrumental case of nouns in Russian? So, the first use I have written here is without preposition. So, instrumental case of nouns can be used without preposition and as the name suggests, how do you define the instrumental case? something that denotes the instrument of action. Primary use of the instrumental case of nouns is to denote the instrument of action and especially when it is used without the preposition. For example, studenti pishut karanda shom ili ruchkai. The students write with a pencil 
or a pen. So Karan Dash, as you can see, has become Karan Dashum, which is the instrumental case form of the noun Karan Dash, and Ruchka has become Ruchkai. So these two forms correspond to the instrumental case form of the nouns Karan Dash and Ruchkai. So as you can see, Karan Dash and Ruchka they denote the instruments of action, which is to write. So how do you write? You write with a pencil or a pen. So these two are instruments. That is why we have kept them in the instrumental case form. The next example I have written here is Abhichna idyat loshkai ili vilkai. Idyat is from the verb to have or to eat. Usually one eats with a spoon or a fork. So spoon and fork, they are again the instruments of action which is to eat. So how do you eat? Either with a spoon or with a fork or both. So that is why these two nouns have been kept in the form of instrumental case. So the first and the primary use of instrumental case is to denote the instruments of action. Apart from denoting the instruments of action, instrumental case of nouns is also used after the verbs stach or stano vitsa, which is the imperfective form of the verb stach and bit. So stano vitsa, stach and after the verb bit, especially when we talk about someone's profession, we use the instrumental case of nouns. For example, moi druk stanit engineerum. Moi druk stanit engineerum. My friend will become an engineer. So here we are talking about the profession of the probable profession of the friend. So that is why we have used the instrumental case form of the noun engineer. The next example is Moi Jiyadushka Bil Kasma Naftam. Moi Jiyadushka Bil Kasma Naftam. I have told you that after the verb bit, we are supposed to use the instrumental case of nouns. So Kasma Naft, that means astronaut. So my grandfather was a was an astronaut. So here as we can see after the verb bit we use the instrumental case of nouns. So these two uses of instrumental case we are supposed to use when we are using the instrumental case without preposition. So we will move on to the next use which is with the preposition sir. sir is a preposition which means with. As I already told you that the instrumental case of nouns are also used with prepositions. For now we will only focus on the preposition sir or s which means with and when we use a noun after this preposition it denotes the person with which something is or some action is performed. For example, there are certain verbs with which we use skim. Sir is with and came is the instrumental case form of kto, with whom. So gulyat skim, gulyat is to take a walk or to walk, to walk with whom, chitach skim, to read with whom, pH which is to sing with whom, tansi watch is to dance again with whom, rabotach to work with whom, gavarit, gavarit to speak with whom and rasgavarivach to talk. So all these verbs can take the instrumental case of the nouns with the preposition sir or s. For example, mi payom sbabushkai. Mi payom sbabushkai. Payom is from the verb pet, which is to sing. So we are singing with the grandmother. So babushka has become babushkai in the instrumental case, and it has been used with the preposition sir, which means with. So we are singing with our grandmother. The next example I have written here is on rasgavari vayat sdrugam. On Rasgavari Vayat Strugam. He is talking to 
his friend. So, Druk in the instrumental case has become Drugam. So, he is talking to his friend. So, this is the second use of the instrumental case of nouns. There are other uses also that we will discuss in the next part. Instrumental case of nouns are also used with the reflexive verbs with non-reflexive meaning which means which are translated in English with the non-reflexive meaning. For example, we have already learned this verb strichatsa strechatsa strichatsa strechatsa which means to meet. To meet has the meaning which is non-reflexive. So, with this verb we are supposed to use the instrumental case of noun with the preposition s. For example, mif strechelis spivitsiai. Mif strechelis spivitsiai. We met the singer. Pivitsa is singer. So, as you can see, if we use the reflexive verb strechitsa, we are supposed to use the instrumental case of the noun pivitsa with the preposition s or s. But when we use the non-reflexive verb, which is strechit, then we are using the accusative case of the noun pivitsa, which becomes pivitsu. Muiv strechili pivitsu. As you can see, the meaning remains the same. We met the singer, we met the singer, but the form of the nouns are different. Why? Because of the verbs. If we are using the reflexive verb, we are using the instrumental case of the noun and if we are using non-reflexive verb, we are using the accusative case of the noun. The next verb is zdarovatsa pasdarovatsa is to greet or to wish someone. Again you can see it has the non-reflexive meaning in English. So, we will use the instrumental case of the noun with the preposition s. Studenti pasdaro valis spripada vachilim. Studenti pasdaro valis spripada vachilim. The students greeted the teacher. So, here we are using the instrumental case of the noun pripada vachil with the preposition. And these two sentences, these two I mean nouns, they answer the question skim with whom. Here also skim which means with whom. So, there are other verbs also that we will discuss in the next part. The other reflexive verbs with which we are supposed to use the instrumental case of nouns with the preposition s are znakomitsa paznakomitsa, which means to get acquainted with someone. Znakomitsa is the nisavishinni or imperfective aspect of the verb and paznakomitsa is the perfective aspect. For example, mi paznakomilis sasiedam. Mi paznakomilis sasiedam. We got acquainted with the neighbor. So, here sasied has been used in the instrumental case with the preposition s. The next set of verb is savyetavatsa and Pasavyetavatsa. Savyetavatsa is to take advice. Pasavyetavatsa is the perfective aspect and Savyetavatsa is imperfective aspect. If you remember while discussing the dative case, we have discussed this verb also, but non-reflexive counterpart of this verb. So, if you use Savyetavatsa, which is the non-reflexive verb, we answer the question Kamu. And kamu requires the noun in the dative case, but here we are using the reflexive verb. So, we will use the instrumental case of the noun with the preposition s. Nam nushna savyetavatsa svrachom. Nam nushna savyetavatsa svrachom. So, we must take advice from the doctor. So, here the meaning remains the same, but the form of the noun changes. The next pair of verb is vijitsa 
увидеться. Видеться, увидеться, to see each other. And if you remember the verb, which is the non-reflexive counterpart of видеться is видеть and увидеть. When we use видеть, увидеть, we use the accusative case of the noun. But here, we are using the reflexive verb. So, we will use the instrumental case of the noun or pronoun along with the preposition s. So, me davnu ni vijalis swami. So, it is been long, we have not met you. So, here as you can see, we are using the instrumental case of the pronoun we. So, these were the verbs, reflexive verbs with which we use the instrumental case of the nouns along with the preposition sir. And apart from the preposition sir or s, we use the instrumental case of nouns with other prepositions as well. For example, the preposition nad, which means above. So, after nad, we will use the instrumental case of nouns. Pat is below. So, nad is above, pat is below. After pat also, we will use the instrumental case. The next one is meshtu. Meshtu is between. Meshtu also takes the instrumental case of nouns. Pirith. Pirith is in front of. It also takes the instrumental case of nouns. And za, za is behind. So, these are some of the prepositions which take the instrumental case of nouns. So, these were some of the uses of the instrumental case. And the interrogative words that the instrumental case of nouns answer are kiem without preposition, chiem, which is inanimate noun. So, when the question is chiem, then we are required to use inanimate nouns with preposition skiem or with whom, chiem again, chiem requires inanimate nouns. So, with what? So, these are the interrogative words that the instrumental case of nouns answer. So, this is all about the introduction of the instrumental case. So, now we will move on to our next topic.